Okay, we're sitting here waiting to go on a, a boat to go up and down the river. But I wanted to show you the cobblestone or brick uh, road we got right here. Uh, this is old and they kept these. Uh, uh, it's very rough when they would come down it. But there's the boat we're going to get on here. We're going to about 30, 40 more minutes and we're going to get on that boat and we're going up and down the river. So, all right. Well, when I get on there, I'll make some more videos. All right, we're sitting here waiting on the boat. i just get another picture of it. We're a little bit closer, but that's what it is. I can't hardly wait. We still got about 30 minutes. The dome up there is 24, 24 karat gold. Yeah, so uh, that's they, that's what they told us when we went on that tour. So, okay, I'm going to turn it off and wait till we get ready for a boat tour. Started moving, so. Well, let's get right to see her. Come on, the dock here. Out here on the Savannah River. Up here on the fourth deck, where you folks on the third deck. We're going to walk past any questions on the trip, so we'll cover everything we see. But currently, we're out here on the Savannah River, folks. Unfortunately, for some of you that might think this is the Mississippi River, it is not. A couple people on the last cruise down there on the Mississippi River. We're actually on the Savannah River. It's about 300 miles long. It starts up the river. About 300 miles up the river. Takes a good crane operator about 60 they to 90 seconds. They have to build that to high so the ships and boats can get under one. it. The reason this salt crane is down here is because every now and again we get. Hold that span up, and the distance between those two towers right around 1,100 feet. Now you might be asking yourself, why in the world are the old towers still standing there if that bridge was completed in 1991? Well, after adjusting for inflation, they found that it would cost more money to remove those towers than it did to build the original bridge in the first place. Wow. So they left them standing right where they're at. needed those stones for stability, but we had the cargo would provide, provide enough stability. So they took the stones, they threw them overboard, they began piling up here along the city front in Savannians, well you might have guessed it, they were tickled to death. An endless supply of building materials brought to their doorstep free of charge. So many of the walkways and seawalls and buildings you see here along Burr Street are made out of ballast stones from destinations all over the world. Drink of water, folks. 
stay hydrated on your talk. It'll feel a lot better when we get turned around and headed back into the wind. But we got a little ways to go. Over here to the right, you see that globe, split globe memorial. It's our World War II memorial. It's a really unique memorial. Go stop by and check it out. Kind of represents how it was a divided world back there in those days. And again, that's a short walk from your disembarked boat, and so is the uh, steamship Savannah monument over there, the fountain. Then we got the Hyatt Regency Hotel. If you look at their dock where that aluminum ramp leads up, if you walk along the river's edge there, there's a plaque right at the top of that ramp. And that indicates that this is where General Oglethorpe landed in 1733. Him and 114 brave souls had spent 88 days at sea aboard the good ship Anne before arriving here in Savannah. Now they stepped off the boat and Oglethorpe was met by the chief of the Yamakraw Indians, Chief Tomochichi. He's said to be an unusual character, six foot seven, six foot eight, they say, lived into his 90s. Now, Tomochichi and Oglethorpe, they became fast friends. Tomochichi provided the early settlers with provisions to see them through their first winter, as well as showed, a, showed them how to harvest the edible marine life that could be found here. Now, not only were the settlers in Oglethorpe met by Tomochichi when they stepped off the boat, but when he stepped off, he had in his, plant, in his hands the plans of exactly how he wanted Savannah laid out. She's truly the first planned city here in the United States. She's laid out in a perfect grid pattern. 24 squares were originally built. 22 still exists. I highly recommend you check out all our beautiful city squares, just like Forrest Gump did when he was waiting for his bus with his box of chocolates in Chippewa Square. <laughs> now all these buildings located here along River Street, for the most part, a lot of them were old cotton warehouses when they were first built. Back in the 1840s, Savannah was known as King Cotton. We're the number one exporter of cotton in the Atlantic, number two in the world, shipping out over two million bales of cotton each and every year at our peak. How it worked was cotton would come here to Savannah by either rail or by barge, and then be loaded aboard wagons. These wagons would then be drawn up these uh, breaks in between the buildings up these ramps. Now they drew it up these ramps because those big black iron walkways you see coming into view now, spanning the gap there, those are what's known as factors walks. And the factors would stand up there, they look down, and they bid competitively against each other on the loads of cotton drawn beneath them. Now the winning bidder, they would take their load of cotton behind these buildings to the second story. There's an alleyway running behind all these buildings. They took it to the second story because that is where the cotton gins were located. Now the cotton gins, what were they? They were a machine that cleaned the cotton. That wasn't a, like a washing machine, it didn't wash the cotton, it cleaned it by removing the undesirable materials, the sticks, the stones, the seeds, and things like that. Beforehand, it was done by hand, so it was a very welcome invention, not only here in Savannah, but throughout the antebellum south. It's actually said to be one of the most influential inventions of the Industrial Revolution as it affected much of the antebellum south. Now once the cotton was processed through the cotton gin, it was dropped down to the first story, rolled out the door, loaded aboard tall ships for destinations all over the world. You can only imagine the sight that must have been with tall sailing ships tied up here along the city front, three or four wide. Especially with the invention of the steam engine slowly phasing these taller sailing ships out for steam-powered vessels. Now Savannah's King Cotton Days came to a quick end with the decimation of the cotton crop by a nasty little insect known as the bow weevil. And to get a little idea of the how how we... over here to the right, we're about to come by our uh, fleet mate, our other boat that's part of Savannah River Boat Cruises. This is the Savannah River Queen, so the 600 passenger river boat. If you ever spent any time in New Orleans prior to Hurricane Katrina, she used to operate there as the Cajun Queen. After Hurricane Katrina rolled through, uh, FEMA basically took her over as a floating headquarters. Pretty much the only place in New Orleans that had uh, electricity and running water and a sewage bow. This is known as a bulbous bow. When they're loaded up, it sits below the water. And what it does is it acts sort of like the nose cone on an airplane aboard the ship, load it down into the hold, and they shut the hatches, then they're bound for Turkey, where they'll use a little heat, pressure, and resin. They'll turn it into particle board, and then many of you probably spent a couple frustrating hours trying to decipher the instructions that came with your furniture that you purchased at Ikea, Staples, or Walmart. Probably start out right here in our woodchip hall in Savannah, Georgia. Ten different soldiers dressed up. I think they're doing a photo shoot today. But they're gonna fire a six pound cannon at us. If anyone catches the cannonball, you get a free cheeseburger. <laughs> get ready for that. 
Now it is also extremely loud, so if you don't like loud noises, you don't want to cover your ears if you're going by. And after the fire, the cannon shell strangely sounds off the ship's whistle, but you already heard it. It's pretty loud, so if you're at the front of the boat, you might want to cover your ears. And how it works is you put the they'll stand beside the cannon, they'll raise up one hand and they'll drop it, that's when they fire the cannon. So we'll get a good look at it here in just a moment. dressed up in different uh, periods of uniform. Pretty cool place to check out. Yeah, these kind of, uh, take the four right, here they are, they're getting ready to fire. Well, that was not the cannon, that was, I think, a musket. The cannon's much louder than that. They usually don't do that. Where'd it go? Thanks. Give them a round of applause while they're getting up there. They're the feet those gold uniforms. You can find a pair on the back down there. That was neat. Uh-huh. So that's old Fort Jackson. You guys, a cool place to check out. It's offered by our Heritage Foundation, not by the National Parks. It's all, all privately funded through donations. We hold on to your ticket, we're going to close at 5 o'clock today, but if you hold on to your ticket, you get about a 5 or 10% discount on the price of admission. There's only, I think, it's like 3 or $5 just to get in there. Stop by and check that out. And tomorrow when we go by, we go by at about 2 o'clock and about 4.20 like we did today. They'll be firing the can at us again, so you get a pretty cool look at it as you go by. Alright, so Captain Trey's got to turn around and head back over here. The breeze is going to pick up here. It's going to feel excellent. I'm going to stop yeah. talking for a little bit. Try some music on. When we get closest to the city front, I'll pick it back up and tell you more about what's going on up there. And uh, if you look up ahead of us, you can see that railroad is coming down the river now. And we'll probably be passing by on our port side, the left side of the boat. It's like Captain Trey set up for a one whistle pass. If we have any questions, I'll be up here on the top deck for a couple more minutes. Then I'm going to head upstairs and cool down in the AC. Don't forget about the third deck and fourth deck the bars that are open if you guys get hungry thirsty stay hydrated and then down there on the third deck the restrooms are to the back of the boat to the left of the bar and please use the handrails as you're going up and down the stairs please and again we just got turned around to you folks down there on the third deck it is much much enjoyable up here now with the breeze blowing on us so sit back relax turn some music on and i'll be back to you once we get closer to the city front Wait. 
but it's Paula Dean's restaurant and the food was really good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Y'all have a good day.